This is going to be the toughest challenge yet. Today, I'm doing a challenge on Dead Rising. Dead Rising is a zombie game which gives you plenty of options to take down zombies. Almost everything can be used as a weapon, which gives a lot of replayability and gives people the chance to try different challenge runs. But just because you can use many different weapons doesn't mean every weapon is good. And because of this, we're going to try and beat the game with one of the worst weapon groups ever. Toy weapons. Most toy weapons are kind of useless and don't do much damage, which makes them perfect for a challenge run. But before we start the challenge, let's go over the rules. The rules are pretty simple. We need to kill all zombies and bosses with purely toy weapons. If we inflict damage to zombies or bosses through other means, then we have to reload to a previous save. The only exceptions are escaping zombie grabs, as it would be absurdly hard to not get grabbed by zombies. And the final boss of the game, as every challenge run I can think of, would fail at this point, as you don't have weapons during that part of the game. Then for the next rule, we have to get ending S, as that is the true ending of the game and the conclusion of the story. Now, this isn't a rule, but I'm going to try and save any survivors and fight any psychopaths if time permits it. The only reason it isn't a rule is saving survivors with only toys can be, uh, very frustrating. <laughs> Now that the rules are out of the way, let's get into it. After getting to the mall, we head into the entrance plaza where we realize that the doors are covered by zombies. We head to the back of the entrance plaza to grab something that could possibly help with the barricade, when a dumb old hag decides to rescue her dog who isn't even in any danger. He's just chilling. <laughs> and because of this, the zombies start flooding the mall. With no time to waste and no way to fight back, we dodge the zombies as best as we can and head back to the security room. We meet Brad and Jesse and we decide to climb through the vent and onto the roof. We escorted Natalie and Jeff back to the safe room and now we can finally head into the mall. We realize that Brad's in trouble, so we have to help him. Before we can do that, we have to gear up. Once we enter Paradise Plaza, we grab a couple of toy laser swords from the toy store, head to the bookstore to grab the hobby book, which can increase the durability of toy weapons, and let me just tell you, this is a necessity. <laughs> it's very important. And we have to grow masters to make some untouchables which will help get by zombies. After gathering everything we need, we head to the food court to help Brad fight Carlito. Brad gives us a gun expecting us to shoot him, but I said fuck that, and I just started smacking him around with my toy sword. I didn't have any strategy for this fight, I just ran and smacked him over and over, tanking all of his attacks. This was insanely annoying as he kept kicking me over and over, and since the toy sword does so little damage, this fight took a long time. But I think we managed to beat him on my first try. Now that Carlito's gone, we head to the entrance plaza where Brad tries to convince Dr. Barnaby to come with us, but he's not budging. Because of this, Brad and us decide to head our separate ways, and this is where the fun begins. This is where the fun begins. Now, it's time to help some survivors. 
I first decided to help Aaron and Bert in Alfresca Plaza. We smack Bert a few times to get him to join us and get out of Alfresca Plaza, or at least try to, anyways. <laughs> So, yeah, the Toy Laser Sword is insanely useless when it comes to attacking zombies. It knocks them down for like half a second, and then they get right back up. That's why saving survivors suck, because you can't really kill zombies, and you have to rely on luck trying to save them. Bert was fine, as he comes with a bat, but Eren is one of the most useless fuckers in existence. The dude was crawling on the ground crying, and I was considering just leaving him behind just because this pissed me off so much. But I persevered and managed to get them both to the security room in one piece. Next, I headed back to Alfresca to get Leah, and this is easy as you're actually able to carry her and the zombies don't really attack you all that often if you're carrying somebody. On the way back to Paradise Plaza, we encountered the first real challenge. <laughs> the convicts are the first real challenge of the run, but if I was going to fight them, I was going to do it by myself, so I first convinced Sophie to come with us and tried to sneak by the convicts. Thankfully, the transition to midnight teleported them somewhere else in the park, so I was able to get both survivors back to the security room. Now that they're gone, it's time to fight the convicts, and this went about as well as you ex would expect. I was trying to get them completely stuck by crashing into a pole or a tree or something, but instead they were just driving in a circle around this tree. The main problem with this fight, other than toy laser sword sucking absolute shit, is the prisoner manning the machine gun as he kept shooting me over and over. The only thing I could do was just tank all the damage and healing when low on health. Eventually I took him down and the rest of the prisoners were a breeze. <laughs> Next, I headed to Wonderland Plaza to fight another psychopath. <laughs> this boss had me worried mainly because of how little damage I could get in. Adam the Clown has a lot of attacks that leave him vulnerable, but the problem is that you can only hit him once and then he blocks the rest of your attacks. I didn't think I would be able to win this purely because of time reasons, but then I learned a strategy. Adam has an attack where he blows a balloon, and if it hits you, it stuns you, and does damage, but it also affects him as well. So I would lure him into a group of zombies and try to get him to throw the balloon into a zombie right next to him. Now I know what you're thinking, sweet ZD, why don't you just throw your sword into the balloon instead of wasting your time with this zombie strategy? Well I'm glad you asked, here's why. So yeah, it turns out the Toy Lizard Sword is so horrible and useless that it can't even pop the balloons, which forces me to hurt him the other way instead. Thankfully, the balloons do decent damage, so it didn't take very long to down him. We stopped the ride to help Greg get back to the save room. But, of course, it's not without some sort of a struggle, as Greg's constant bloodlust makes him feel the need to fight every single zombie that gets in his way. After Greg almost dies on the way to the safe room, we manage to save him and unlock the shortcut to Wonderland Plaza. The next survivor I decided to save was David in the North Plaza. This is an easy escort, as you can lend him your shoulder, which makes the zombies just incapable of grabbing you. We head to the bookstore in Wonderland Plaza and help the Japanese tourists, which doesn't go very well. Oops! 
I was considering just giving up on these two just because of how hard it was to save them when they were surrounded by zombies, but through sheer determination and screaming in anger, I managed to get them back to the safe room, even though they almost died. Now we wait in the security room until case 2-2, where we need to save Dr. Barnaby from Carlito. The main problem with this fight is just like the previous fight, and it's that Carlito straight up has aimbot and will immediately shoot if you get close. When you do get close, Carlito will instantly retaliate as soon as he is attacked. There really isn't a strategy for this, so I just tanked all of his attacks and healed when I was almost dead. Once we beat Carlito, he shoots Brad and runs off. We carry Dr. Barnaby back to the safe room and Brad starts running a fever. So now we have to go get him some medicine. Medicine, huh? We head to the grocery store in the North Plaza where shit gets serious. I don't allow vandalism in my store! This boss was hard. Whenever I fight Steven in a regular playthrough, he isn't too hard because I can usually just kill him fast, but because I'm using toy weapons, this just simply wasn't possible. This guy was going absolutely insane and was using attacks that I've never seen before. If he hits you, he was capable of stun locking the ever loving shit out of you. He's a very defensive boss, but there is a strategy that works. By jumping on the freezers and circling him, it would cause his AI to pull out the shotgun and then immediately put it away, allowing me to get a couple of attacks in. This came with some problems. I kept accidentally using the roundhouse kick skill by accident simply because I would attack off of the freezers. This killed a lot of my attempts and it was insanely annoying because of how long it took to kill Steven. But I did discover another strategy that was even more effective. So, for some reason, Steven will keep doing this one special move if you stay behind him. This would allow me to whack him over and over. Combine this with the freezer strategy, and it made this fight a lot less tedious. Have a nice day! Now that we have the medicine, we head back to Brad and help him out. Now that we have some time, we head into Paradise Plaza and try to save Pamela. So that didn't work, so I just gave up and went inside the toy store and helped Heather instead. We then head to the movie theater and grab a bunch of toy Mega Busters, and then head to the North Plaza where we fight Isabella. This fight is insanely easy. Shoot her, then jump over her, and then shoot again. She can't really do anything to counter against this, so I just got this on my first try. With some time to kill, I head down to the maintenance tunnels to grab a key which will be really important later. Then, I went to the entrance plaza and fought the sniper psychopaths. So, I first fought Roger by shooting him with a toy Mega Buster. And then finished him off with the toy laser sword. Then, I went back to Paradise, grabbed some more swords, and then killed Thomas and Jack.
I headed to the antique shop and got Floyd, and then went to the perfume shop and got Wayne and escorted them back to the security room. I headed to the empty room in the North Plaza to meet up with Isabella and save her from a zombie. We have to carry Isabella back to the security room, and on the way there, we meet Kindle. I figured that since he has a shotgun, he would easily survive, but uh, that wasn't the case. We bring Isabella back to the security room and wait until case 6-1, which gives us enough time to head to the movie theater. We repeatedly dodge into the group of cultists, praying they don't throw cocaine in my face, and get to the next psychopath. Now I... shall return your tainted blood to the foul earth that has spawned you! Okay. Sean is genuinely hard. He constantly attacks and can fly right up to you in an instant. So I figured it was best to use the Mega Buster in this fight. I would shoot him twice and then run away. You do not want to stand still for too long, otherwise he'll slide right up to you. So you want to always keep moving. What's great is that if you run out of Mega Busters, you can just leave the room to go and grab more and then just come right back. So there really isn't a penalty for running out of ammo. And with no time to waste, I head to Wonderland to fight Paul. This fight was also really easy as you can easily get him to kill himself without too much of a struggle. Just shoot him when he drops pipe bombs and he'll stun him enough to blow himself up. Or you can just shoot him when he taunts with his Molotov and he'll drop it at his feet which will also hurt him. With this strategy, I beat him without taking much damage. Once the fight is over, we have to we have the option of putting the fire out on Paul, but since the fire extinguisher isn't a toy weapon, I just shot him in the nuts until he died. <laughs> now that Paul's dead, we helped out Mindy and Debbie, but this Debbie decided to get surrounded right outside the elevator. And since I had no weapons, I just left her behind. I headed to Wonderland to help Susan and Leroy. Helping Susan is fine, she like never gets grabbed. But Leroy kept getting grabbed, and this forced me to reload many times until I got him to the security room safe and sound. Now we're at the most stressful case in the game, Bomb Collector. So, the strategy was to go through the different main tunnel doors throughout the mall and collect the bombs. I had a very specific order plan to get the bombs in the fastest time possible, but instead I made a really stupid mistake. I completely forgot that I did Ken's questline, and if you get to Paradise Plaza after he does, you get all your weapons taken away, which I completely forgot about as I thought I could fight him normally. Thankfully, however, the time left on the scoop was really small, so all I had to do was just get the other bombs first and then come back and get the one in Paradise Plaza, which lets me avoid this fight completely. The next problem is Carlito in the tunnels. One of the bombs requires me to run a long distance to get to it, and level 50 running speed still isn't enough to outrun him. So to outrun him, I went to the food court, grabbed a couple of wines, and used these to make some quick steps. These were just enough to outrun him and get me one of the bombs, and make it back without getting run over. We head to the last entrance of the grocery store and then use a quick step to run to the entrance of the main tunnel, finishing Bomb Collector. Now that everyone's safe, we head to Paradise Plaza and rescue Simone, who wasn't that hard to escort, and then start case 8-2 where we have to follow Isabella to Carlito's hideout. If you just run far away from Isabella, it will despawn all the zombies around, which will let her get to the hideout without any resistance. Once we reach the hideout, we get a call from Jesse to come back to the security room. We realize that Carlito's in trouble, so we run to the butcher shop down the main stalls to save him from one of the tougher psychopaths. 
That guy over there. I, I mean, uh, that meat? Larry does a lot of damage and has a lot of health to boot. I brought 11 Mega Busters and one healing item and attempted to beat him that way. Yeah, this wasn't working, and considering that this fight is on a time limit, there just isn't enough time to beat him and save Carlito, which means that this is the end of the challenge. That's quite big. So I feel incredibly stupid. I completely forgot that the toy cube existed. This weapon does much more damage than any of the other toy weapons and the only reason I didn't use it at the start is that I thought you could only hold one at a time. As I thought it was just a heavy weapon. But believe it or not, you can hold as many as you want. So with this knowledge, I went into the fight with three toy cubes and a couple of wines and beat his stupid ass. <laughs> After Carlito gives us his pendant and dies, we head back to Isabella and give her her brother's pendant. We get a call from Jessie. We head back to the security room to check on her, but it's too late. She's already a zombie. With a heavy heart, I was forced to put her down. Everything until overtime mode is pretty easy. We simply meet Isabella at 10am and then wait for the helicopter on 12.12. While I was waiting, I used the blender to make a bunch of nectars which will make item collecting in overtime much easier. Once the time hits 12, the helicopter crashes and now we head into overtime. Overtime mode is really annoying simply because it's not worth fighting any of the soldiers around the mall, so all I could do was just run past them. But other than that, collecting the items was relatively easy so long as you tried to sneak around the soldiers. Once we have all the equipment we need, we give them to Isabella, and all that's left are some queens and the generator. Since I had a bunch of nectars before overtime mode, I only needed to kill a couple zombies to get the last few queens. Now with the queens and generator in hand, we run back to Isabella and prolong Frank's zombification. Now all we have to do is get the hell out of Villamette, and the only way to do that is through a zombie infested tunnel. I didn't use any weapons here, I just simply packed a bunch of heals with me and jumped off zombies the whole time. At the end of the tunnel we reach a jeep and start the final fight which plays out the same every playthrough. Just shoot the weak spots on the tank until Brock shows up and then kick him in his stupid face. And now that he's dead, we have officially been Dead Rising with only toy weapons. This is probably the hardest challenge I've ever done on this channel. This truly was a test of endurance, and it makes me think that the developers really never intended for you to beat the game this way with just how weak a lot of the toy weapons are. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and hit the notifications button if you want to know when a new video is up. Have a good day, and I will see you in the next video. Later!